In developing the link between Vayikra and Shmot, Rashi maintains in option 3a that God did not request from the people that they accept his sovereignty. This was something that was asked of and accepted by the people. In Shmot 20, Anochi Hashem, I as God, expect you, my people, to accept me as your sovereign ruler. Nor, for that matter, was he asking of them to commit themselves to the fulfillment of his rules and regulations, the mitzvot, because an acceptance of God's sovereignty contains an implicit demand that the people abide by any rules and regulations that he would ask of them. But Kiblu Gzerotai, God was asking them to commit themselves to the acceptance of a subgroup of mitzvot identified as the Gzerot. With this, Rashi distinguishes between the broad range of mitzvot in general and the subgroup, the Gzerot. We will discuss and elaborate on this distinction elsewhere. Suffice to say that the Gzerot referred to relate to the bulk of the prohibitions recorded in Vayikra. Perik 18, namely the Arayot. Question 4 of the series of nine questions that was asked dealt with the placement of this request. We asked that in theory this request should have been made shortly after Matan Torah in Sefer Shmot rather than in Sefer Vayikra by maintaining that this was a request that the people accept upon themselves God's Gzerot rather than God's Mitzvot. We can justify this request in Sefer Vayikra as this was the very first time in which God was imposing upon them a series of Gzerot. And as we shall explain shortly, this subgroup of Gzerot would not normally have been included in the Kabbalat Mitzvot in general, and hence a specific request from God was necessary. By the same token, we will be in a position to deal with question 3, in which the Rebbe asked why a distinction is being made between Kabbalat Malchut and the fulfillment of the Gzerot, and question 5, along the same lines as to why Rashi reads into the request an acceptance of the Gzerot rather than an acceptance of the much broader category of mitzvot.